What's up everybody, this is Magnus Blog and I'm here with Intellectual from the Netherlands. Thanks for giving me the interview. It's your last show of your tour. Yes. Uh, you toured 30 days and played 29 shows. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. How was? Was it good with only one day off or it was, it, was a, it was a nice tour, yeah, we've been all over Europe, um, a lot of Germany, uh, but uh, quite some UK as well, but we also went to Italy, to Slovenia, France, um, Austria, Austria, Switzerland, yeah, 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 we all over Luxembourg, yeah, all over the place, but it's a good tour together with the timeshares from the US and a uh, lovely band, great guys and good friends by now, <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, yeah, you had, a, you had one show where we would say, or uh, uh, that this was kind of the best show, if you just uh, recognize all of them. I really liked Graz. Yeah, it comes time. to mind to me yeah, too. Yeah, and Nuremberg was good as well. Exeter, we, uh, we had a good response. It was Woodstock. nice to play there. Woodstock Festival, yeah. There were, there were good shows, yeah. yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, you mentioned you're on tour with Timeshares. Uh, how do you know them? From well, the, from we did the tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, how how you get them? That they are your support band. Actually, well, we were the tour was booked for us and and uh, and timeshares together, and we we met when we picked them up at the airport, and we did not we had some contact through through email, but that was it. Okay. Actually, so we did not know who we were going to tour with or what kind of guys it were, they were or are, uh, and uh, it well it. it they turned out nice guys, so it was it worked out well in the end. But uh, no, we were put together by uh, by the booking uh, agency. Yeah, we we've done it before touring with people yeah. you don't know. But I think generally, if people are willing to come over and spend a month with people they don't know, you probably know that they're going to be good people because otherwise they wouldn't. Chances do it. are, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, this well, um, this tour you bring out a new city, yeah, or EP. Um, and there's one th a song on this EP called Mother Inferior. Yes. And you're talking about divorce kids or kids over divorce. And I know that you're not actually saying about... Yeah, it's a metaphor. Yeah. yeah. But uh, what about and why the metaphor divorce? Uh, was something was... Well, I, it, the metaphor stands for if you, uh, for politics in, in general. Like if you, if you see the, our government as the mother and okay. the, the kids as the people under the government, then I think that a mom, the government, should not be married to anything else because I think a government should be independent. Okay. And uh, in, the, in the past, like hundreds of years ago, uh, the politics and religion were mixed. And then we got the separation of church and state because we did not want religion to interfere with politics. And I think the last decades, uh, economy, business, trade, have really interfered with, with uh, government, with politics. And I think, once again, politics should be separated from economy and from economic influences or interests. And that's why, if, if you translate that to the, the metaphor, I think the mom should be a single mom, independent, taking care of her children um, and the children being the people underneath, you know, who, who are uh, governed by the government. Okay, that's, that's an interesting point, but um, then I ask for myself, do you think that in this system we're living, in this economy system called capitalism, it's possible to get a separation of state and economy? I think economy? It's, it, the, the further they are apart, the better it is. Okay. If you can, I'm not sure if you can guarantee that's, that there is a hundred percent division between, like they're separated for 100%, I think that's impossible, because there will always be people, uh, politicians, who, you know, uh, are being influenced by their own economic or financial interests, and I think it, it, it will be very hard to, 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 you know, make sure that it's 100% separated. I, I'm sure it's, it's, that's impossible, but I think it's important to, to make sure that we can split them apart as far as possible. Okay, and the second question because this song, I love the song I heard the first time. Okay, cool. Well, was, for me it was really important to know what you mean. But mm -hmm. When you say a uh, government and its kids, what do you mean? Do you mean just the people of the country or everybody who wants to live in this country? 
Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not going too far for you. <laughs> no, it's it, no, it's not too far. Uh, but it's not very specific. It's 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 like everybody that is being uh, ruled by a government. I mean, that I just mean the difference between those who rule, you know, in, and in a family, it's the mother who decides, uh, or the parents. You know, it's it's. I don't want to be sexist, the mom of, or the dad, but you know, it's a metaphor. So the, the parents who uh, decide for the kids what, what's going on, what's happening. And I think uh, um, that role, the government has a role in a society. And I think if they have that responsibility, they should be independent and uh, uh, they should not be uh, told by companies uh, or other eco economic factors uh, what they should do or how they should rule it the country or the European Union or the world community or whatever, you know, whatever uh, unity you have that is being ruled by government. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned that you play basically in German-speaking countries and do you think there's a difference to, to the Netherlands between the alternative scenes? Uh, even if these countries are close to each other? Yeah, I, I definitely think there's a big difference between, uh, well, between all countries in Europe, but between Germany or German-speaking countries and, and the rest of the countries. Uh, I think in Germany, Austria and Switzerland, there's a lot of attention for, for punk and hardcore, or the alternative scene, as you call it. Um, there's a lot of shows going on. Every, every city or, you know, smaller, even smaller cities have uh, youth centers putting up shows. Uh, uh, with, uh, making it very easy for bands to tour, with making it very easy for promoters to book shows and for people to go, to go somewhere. And I think in Holland it's still relatively easy, but there's not as much attention for, for loud music. And I think uh, in the bigger venues there's not much loud music being programmed, being booked. So going to Germany uh, makes it yeah, it's, it's easier for bands that way. And I think for instance in the UK if you go to, to, to the UK, it's, it's even harder for, for bands to find a show, for bookers to book a show, and um, to get people to shows as well. It's, it's, uh, it's always difficult, even though the, t the shows we had in the UK on this tour were really good, so that, that was nice. But over there you really notice that there are no youth centers, or not as many as there are in, uh, uh, in Holland or in Belgium. And that it's it's hard for for promoters to book shows because they they have to pay a lot of money to to a to a bar or a venue or if there is a youth center to that and to to be able to to book a show and it's hard to get people interested and uh, if people are in uh, at the show it's you you notice that you sell less merchandise which is you know it's too bad for bands um, uh, but that those are differences you. You, you know that people can make and the dynamic is different for playing. Okay, that would be my next question. You know, because you talked about promoters and the venues, what about the audience when you're actually playing? Are they more kind of maybe more involved or less involved? Because I can just say for I think this region, people come to a show for uh, getting in an outer mindset. They want to enjoy the music, and uh, they take. Yeah, they know what, where they're coming from, if they know intellectual. And, uh, but people, in the first place, I think people come for shows for fun, for meeting other people, and for enjoying the music. And um, our music has a message in it. And um, that's for us a plus, but for maybe for people in the audience, it, it's just, hey, a band that plays music, and, and I can scream on it. So that's, I think, uh, are you, yeah. <laughs> I think it's it's hard to say how the responses are different from place to place. I mean, I think generally um, the bigger the city you play, exactly. yeah, yeah. the less interested people can be because they get might be a little spoiled because a lot of things are happening in that in, in bigger cities. So I think in general, um, playing shows in smaller towns can be a little more rewarding uh, as for uh, crowd participation. Uh, but I'm, I'm I wouldn't really say that there's a big difference between countries, or not, not, not that I'm aware of. Well, in Europe, no, there is, but we also, we, we've been to Brazil and to Russia, for instance, and if you have shows over there, you really notice that people don't get to see many bands play live, 
and if you're there and you're playing live to them, people go crazy. So you know there there is a bit a difference if you look at it worldwide. And maybe it's true that if you go more south, people uh, are more enthusiastic in general. You know they will you know might dance sooner to songs, and people more up north in in Holland uh, uh, or even in Scandinavia are you know uh, a bit more timid and and. Um, will wait and see if they enjoy what they see before they really go crazy. Okay. And um, yeah, I th that can be a difference. But uh, what Rika says, like the difference between big cities and smaller towns within countries is a, a difference that is noticeable, definitely. I want to see what we actually... Yeah, that's why I'm checking. <laughs> ah, okay, now we can look at ourselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, one more general question before we get back to intellectual US band. Um, in Germany in the 80s and the 90s especially there was formed uh, own kind of punk, Deutsch punk or German mm -hmm. punk. Is there something like uh, similar in in Netherlands? No, in the Netherlands? No. Mm -hmm. Not really. You have bands singing in their own language even though there's not that many. Um, but it's not a type of sh genre. Okay. You know, it's not the one group of bands that has the same style that sings in Dutch. No, we're too, uh, too, uh, Small. no Anglo Saxon yeah. minded. <clears throat> Focused outward, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I don't listen to a lot of Deutsch Punk. It's a very specific genre, as you say. But on the other hand, I, I think it's healthy that you, that you also make up your own style of punk rock within your own country, you know, uh, not only being focused on what is happening in one spot of the world just because punk was originated in the US or in the UK or wherever you think it's from. Um, so, you know, I, I don't see it as a bad thing. Okay, so um, you toured three months ago with Propaganda? Yeah, in, in July. July. In July, yeah. yeah. So three months ago. Then you released uh, your EP and now you're touring again. Yeah. How you managed to play with Propaganda or to get a tour with Propaganda and especially how you managed not to kill each other of, of you three in the six month where you basically just... Well, you have to sit around. between us <laughs> just to make sure we don't <laughs> fight, so you know. Um, uh, how we get to tour with Propaganda, that's the first, first question, yeah. right? <laughs> um, for this occasion it was actually really a matter of being emailed by the, the, the booker of, of their tour. Okay. They needed a support band and if we wanted to and then we thought long and hard but no we, we really wanted to do that obviously and we uh, yeah we uh, it was something we really wanted to do and we've been in touch before like Chris Hanna their singer he did vocals on our previous album um, we've done shows with them before not on tour but you know one-off shows um, so there was always con contact and a connection and um, yeah, when this occasion occurred, we definitely wanted to do that. I mean, yeah, we, I think over the last five years we've been emailing them every time we hear they come on tour and I think this was just their way of being like, okay, okay, just stop emailing us, come on tour with us. <laughs> okay, and the second question, that, that you can still play with each other? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's awesome. Yeah, but I don't know I think so too. any other band who says, "Yeah, we're going to uh, get." A there tour are more bands. bands. There are more bands, but in Europe, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you do. But there's a lot of bands that tour constantly, and there's mo there's bands that tour more than we do. Uh, but the thing is, um, we've been doing this for a while, and it's not like we started. We said one day we said, "Now we want to do a hundred shows per year." That it grew over time, and you have to, you know, get. Uh, you have to learn how to do it, you know, I'm not saying that we're, we learned it and we're good at it, but it's something you, you grow into and it's something you grow to learn and, um, um, and on the other hand, I mean, you have bands that tour one week per year and they go crazy for that week, they drink their asses off and they, they die every morning and, you know, if you tour that way you cannot do it like 100 shows per year, but uh, that's not, at least not how I tour and how we tour, uh, you, you have to make it work, it, okay. that's, that's the way, just make sure you prepare when you go on tour, you ar arrange the stuff before you go on tour, uh, make it bearable, yeah. 
to a quarter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nice reference. Certain band. Yeah. Okay, the last question. What's coming next for you? You're just going to settle after this tour first? Another, <laughs> Another tour. Another <laughs> tour. No, really? What's up next is uh, laundry and paying bills. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but no, actually we uh, um, <coughs> we have a small trip planned in uh, hey Mike <laughs> in uh, in November. October, November. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, we have, yeah. The first yeah, things we we're doing is, is uh, the support shows for uh, ZSK. As nice. You perhaps now uh, the, the German band, not Deutschpunk, right? They they used to. They not mix Deutschpunk. Yeah, they okay. mix it. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, they will be touring in October and November, and we're doing the support for those shows, uh, also in Germany and in Austria. Nice. And um, in November we're gonna do a week tour through France with a Canadian band called the Rebel Spell, and we're ah, going. Know, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, they will be touring Germany as well, but we're doing the French dates with them. And we'll be touring to the UK with a Sweet Empire, a Dutch band. And we're going to a festival in Scotland called uh, Book Your Rain Fest. And, that's, and we're doing some more German shows in December on our own, I think. Or no, with uh, Skin of Tears. Oh yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. And uh, I think that's it for what is planned for this year. Okay. There might be some more shows, but the rest is coming up next year. Sounds awesome. Yeah, looking forward. I mean, last day of tour, but there's more coming. Well, so everybody, thanks for giving me the Duffy first. I'm Anytime, sorry. of course. Yeah. And everybody, you hear it? You can see Intellectual again in December here in Germany, and maybe even with Sadascar in October, November. Yes. Don't miss Sadascar, don't miss Intellectual, two great bands. Um, if you like this interview, you can just click here and you get to an interview with Frank Turner, or you click here to get to my documentary about punk and hardcore in Israel. Because it works. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna have some fun with the show, and stay tuned. Bye bye.